How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel for a new video. Doing something a little bit different today. We are doing a Q&A. Uh, the other day on my Instagram and on my YouTube community page, I posted comments saying, if you guys have questions, I'm gonna shoot a video on it. Haven't had a ton of stuff going on in the garage this weekend. I was on kid duty, so didn't really have too much time to get out here and do any work. So, wanted to do the next best thing and make a Q&A video for you guys to ask me some questions about the channel, the cars, the garage space, pretty much anything, and I got some questions from you. So we're gonna be answering them in this video today. Before we get started, I wanna just say, extending the Q&A out to those of you watching right now, so go down below in the comments, write a question, I will respond to pretty much everything within reason. So if you wanna get a question in still, I'd be happy to answer that for you. So we're gonna start with uh, one of the questions that came up on the community page, which is, best NC Miata shift knob to replace a worn OEM one? This is a question that there's, there can be a, a ton of different answers for. So I've gone through probably four or five different shift knobs now, and the one that I went back to, even after getting rid of the G-Racing uh, shifter unit, I went back to my Tomei Duracon shift knob. It's nothing special. It's just black Duracon plastic, so it doesn't get hot in the summer in Texas, which is super important to me. It feels really good in the hand. They make multiple sizes as far as like 40 mil, 60 mil. Uh, I can't remember everything else, but I got the mid, mid-level height one, and I, I really love it. It's not weighted or anything like that, but generally I can't tell the difference. The Miata shifter is already really good and notchy, and replacing the shift knobs didn't really do anything in my eyes that made it drive better. Yeah, so Tomei Duracon shift knob. All right, now hopping over to Instagram. This one came in. How is the 2.5 swap holding up so far? 2.5 swap has held up fine. I've had it in the car now for just about two years. It's crazy to think that. The only two issues I really had with it were um, the valve cover gasket leak and the um, VVT solenoid getting clogged up. Both of those are probably my fault. I know one of them for sure is my fault. Uh, that just kind of comes with putting an engine together for the first time, you make mistakes. But outside of that, it's been totally fine. My Really my only complaint with it, if I were to get nitpicky, is the engine is kind of loud. But that's just with the injectors, they click a lot, and then my flywheel chatters a lot. But I mean, this car is not, you know, a daily driver really anymore so sound wise I don't really care too much really it's it's been fine I mean I get 32 miles per gallon on the highway when I cruise around and yeah I mean it's it's good I very much enjoyed it I think I've surprised myself more than anything knowing that I did it all myself outside of the tuning and all that but yeah it's it's been a good car it's been a good engine I certainly understand why people praise it so much now I mean it's nothing crazy but it is uh, it certainly turns the car into something different than it was with the 2.0. So this one comes through again on Instagram. All these next few are from Instagram. What mods do you regret, if any? Uh, that's a good question. So I spent a lot of time researching and thinking about what I was gonna be doing for this project, you know, buying parts, stacking them on the shelf, installing everything. And I don't regret buying any parts for the NC Miata. If there's something that's not on the car anymore, then I probably regretted it. I'm trying to think of things that I might have regretted. I mean, recently I got rid of the uh, G Racing shifter. I didn't regret putting that in. I just wanted something different. Um, recently took out the steering wheel. Don't regret that. Just wanted to go back to something different. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I spent a lot of time regretting doing things on older cars that I had, enough to know that everything I do on this car is gonna be something that I want to do. I guess if I was gonna say one thing, uh, I probably wouldn't have done the bumper cut again. I probably wouldn't have done that again. It looked good and it worked well, but that's a modification that like once you do, you can't go back. Kind of like the hood vents, but I still like the hood vents because they were act they're actually functional still. The bumper cut just made it more difficult to install the rear diffuser and it looked good with a single exit exhaust and everything like that, but that was, you know, I had the car pretty early on still. I And I guess other things too, I, I guess I regret spending money on things that I knew I was going to replace, like going through all the sets of wheels and you know, buying springs before getting coilovers, like stuff like that I regret doing. I didn't regret it at the time, but it's not even on the car anymore. I wish I would have just saved the money 
first and bought the thing that I actually wanted. I mean, it's buy once, cry once, you know, buy twice and you're just gonna regret it. This is a uh, ca kind of a casual one. Favorite beer. Um, this comes from Ghosty Miata. Hi Jordan, hope you're watching. Um, favorite beer, that's a really good question because obviously I've got a glass of wine here and I'm a, I'm a huge whiskey drinker. Um, I, I'm really into like whiskeys and bourbons and things like that. And I like, I like a good mixed drink and I've never super been into beer. Like I was when the first like the craft beer craze was coming on here in the like North Texas area and all these breweries popped up. I did a documentary on it. I think if you go way, way back, it's one of like my first videos. If you sort by oldest, you'll be able to watch my college beer documentary. Um, but if I'm going to a restaurant and I want to order a beer, I'll usually pick like a light beer because every time I drink one, it just makes me feel really gross and groggy. And I mean, I just buy Miller Lite. I know that's probably most of you guys are cringing right now, especially if you're beer drinkers. And I, I appreciate the uh, beer drinkers and a nice beer and all that, but it's, it's kind of like wine for me where I appreciate the work that went into it and how people like it so much, but I can't tell a huge difference in the taste and quality. So I just get Miller Lite. Plus it's a uh, Midwestern beer. The only downside of it is that it is brewed in Wisconsin. All right, and then coming off of that one, another one from Jordan, he like add on question, is why Miata instead of other similar cars? So that goes back to, back before I even had a Miata, before I even really knew I wanted one. Uh, you know, getting into the car scene, as a young kid, you see like a lot of people were doing wild stuff with Miatas. It was, you know, kind of towards the end of high school for me. So like Stance Nation and Stance Works and all that was like the hottest thing. And a lot of people were doing Miatas and other cars like, like that and slamming them down, putting on some hot boy wheels. And I just thought it was the coolest thing. So my buddy who owned a Kia as well, he sold the Kia, I think, and he got an NA Miata. And it was like junk. Like we, I remember he brought it over one day and we were just ripping out the old alarm system, just all this junk that was in it. And it was like primer slash spray painted black. It was really rough, but working on that little car and just seeing how much fun he was having, I was like, all right, I have to, you know, I have to get something like this similar. And I knew things like the S2000 and you know, all the other cars that were like Fast and Furious, Need for Speed, Midnight Club, all that stuff was huge, like Evos, Subarus. I've been in the cars for a really long time, just have put cars on the back burner per se, as far as like wanting them. Um, so he gets another Miata. This one's a lot nicer. He lets me drive it. I mean, it was, it was such a fun little car. And ever since then I was like, all right, I'm gonna get one of these eventually. That story continues on. I went to a dealership and drove a NC3 Club and it was just like, it was so awesome. And then to compare that, I drove the Club and then I drove a Saturn Sky at the same time, like right, well, like one after the other. And it was just, you know, convertibles were cool and everything, but I was like, wow, the Miata is just so much better than, than this other car that's, you know, you compare it to. And I wouldn't say, you know, the Miata would be hard to replace. It's not that I don't want other cars, I definitely want other cars, but it's like if you're gonna have a collection of cars or multiple cars and a Miata can be a toy, that's why I've kept it, that's why I still love it. I get the same joy, if not more, out of it every single time I work on it, drive it, and um, yeah, it's just such a solid car. The community behind it, like the meet we had, so many Miata owners show up. Miata owners are kind of wild, like they're almost like Corvette owners in a sense of where there's so much pride in everything that you've done, whether you have a stock Miata and you're like hell bent on saying that the engineers did everything perfectly, or if you're like me and like to play around with things, you know, cut things up, paint things, you know, modify it, all that. The, the community around it is really interesting as well. And um, I certainly get why people hold on to these cars for a long time. All right, this is a question that came in from Corey.nc. Um, huge fan of his Miata. If you follow him on Instagram, I'm sure you'll agree. But he asked a couple questions. Garage face plans. That's a really good one. Um, I've been thinking about that for a really long time because I've been in this garage now, this house for six years, just about six years, I think. And 
it's kind of reached this this space the garage space has kind of reached its boiling over point i guess i've just kind of accumulated a lot of things and have just added to it without taking a step back and really planning on what i wanted it to look like it's a big enough space it's a two-car garage that could easily fit two cars i mean i've got extra space on both sides of the cars uh, obviously i have the workbench the big thing I really, really want to do is for one, clean it up because I have just been so behind with getting cleaned up in this space. I've got stuff all over. It needs to be cleaned. Um, and I want to think of a new way to move the storage shelves, at least the front one, because it's kind of annoying backing in to the garage and like, I've left just enough room between the tool bench, the engine hoist and the um, shelf to open my door up so I can get out of the car. Like. I've made it that tight in here that it's just kind of annoying and I've got this back wall here that I've got the TV on and, and all that but I think I just need to rearrange some things and see if it works. That's just like a whole weekend of moving everything but if I'm going to be doing that I also want to do a full paint um, like paint all the walls. I want to do like a white like black two-tone kind of thing I'm thinking just to clean it up. I mean I've got like dirty handprints on the walls and it's just kind of, I don't know, it's its worn out. It feels worn out out here. It feels worked in, but it feels a little worn as well. And it needs a power wash on the ground, and it just needs some help. Basically, what I want to do is streamline it, clean it up, paint some walls, and uh, go from there. But I'm not sure how much longer I'll actually be in this house, but we'll see as, uh, see as time comes. And then he also asked car color plans. Uh, for right now, no, I don't really have plans uh the car needs a full like cut and buff detail i really like the copper red and so far i'm liking the carbon fiber hardtop and uh spoiler i also have a set of carbon fiber mirrors coming in from murakami murakami i think it's murakami it's a shop in japan that races in um oh what's it called so it's murakami motors and they make a set of carbon fiber mirrors for the nc miata because they race and Super Taiku Racing Series in Japan. So super cool, that's not gonna be here until like October though. So we'll be doing the uh, the red and carbon fiber look for a little bit at least and then eventually, if, I, if the paint gets real bad after like a buff and detail and everything, uh, I've been thinking about doing like a livery wrap. Nothing wild, but like the Mazda Renown uh, livery they did on the Le Mans car. Super cool. That'd be kind of cool to do. I've seen someone else do it and it looked awesome, but they don't have it anymore So I guess I wouldn't be copying but that's really gonna be it as far as the question and answers go So like I said at the beginning if you guys are curious to ask anything else Be sure you go down below in the comments and just write a comment and I'll uh, write a reply to you But thank you all so much for checking out this video checking out the channel. We're really still just working our way towards 10,000 subscribers and uh, I, I just appreciate you having having you guys around and watching the videos, writing your comments, asking questions and, and you know showing up to the meet that we had and everything like that. It's just, it's awesome to see the community grow and how you guys are so supportive of just watching and sharing the videos and commenting. Even on Reddit, I'll see uh, photos that I post and someone will like post the link to my channel and it's stuff like that that just makes me really appreciative of you guys. But we're gonna close it out. So if you are new to the channel, be sure you go down below, hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Like I said, leave your comments below. I'll see you in the next one.